Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice and hopefully triangulate a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Long Yu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan, and both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis, that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. There are a number of artifacts, which can still be found all over the Earth, that are extremely hard for modern academia to explain, using their popularly attested and often regurgitated views regarding chronological timelines of the developments of man. Most of these surviving objects are locked away within the collections of wily individuals, people aware of the many other such artifacts which have been found, stolen, and never seen again. These guardians of the artifacts have often encountered attempted robberies, switch tactics, and often offered large sums of money to allow these artifacts to just simply vanish. Yet fortunately, many still cling to existence thanks to a handful of individuals guided by a moral duty to share them with the world. And our next artifact could be seen as such an object. Known as the Dashka Stone, it is a controversial artifact that it is believed by some to be the guidelines used by the quote, architect of the world. Also known as the map of the creator, the Dashka Stone tablet has baffled researchers since its discovery in 1999, and as impossible as it may seem, a number of specialist Russian experts after in-depth analysis of the stone have concluded that it is indeed a stone map that is as much as 120 million years old. Created from a bird's eye view, presumably from space, the Dashka slabs depicts in detail the peaks and valleys of the Ural Mountains. Although mainstream academia will simply deny the possibility of the Dashka's true purpose and indeed age, many who have researched, mapped, and analyzed the slab have concluded that it is indeed somehow authentic and well over 100 million years old. Initially discovered by archaeologists from the Bashkir State University, it was actually found within the Ural Mountains of eastern Russia. Researchers were understandably stunned when they realized that the tablet displayed a highly accurate topographical map of Bashkiria, 
a specific area of the Ural Mountains at a scale of approximately 1 inch to 1 kilometer. The map of the creator also retains clues to its artificial origins within its structure, comprised of three layers, each of which strongly suggesting to geologists that it did not originate in nature, but was indeed artificially created deep within antiquity. The first layer is roughly 7 inches of a primitive cement ceramic compound. The second layer is roughly 1 inch thick made of diopside glass, enriched with silicon, and the third layer, a mere few millimeters thick, is made of a calcium porcelain mixture. Who created the Dashka slab? Did they really create it over 120 million years ago? Like many specialists have reluctantly become convinced is the case? It is unquestionably a remarkable object, and one which deserves a lot more attention. Many researchers throughout history have concluded that there was once an advanced race of humans, which were in worldwide communication with one another. Many methods for building, religious figures, and even legends have managed to cross the oceans of Earth over its long life. But the most compelling evidence for this intelligent and extremely advanced ancient civilization is the alignments discovered in regards to ancient sites. With the use of modern technology, we have unraveled just how vast their knowledge must have been. For example, the Great Pyramid is aligned with Machu Picchu, the Nazca Lines, and Easter Island along a straight line around the center of the Earth, with a margin of error of less than one-tenth of one degree. Other sites of ancient construction that are also within one-tenth of one degree of this line include the capital city of ancient Persia, the ancient capital city of the Indus Valley, the once lost city of Petra, the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, and the temples at Angkor Wat, among many others which are just out of alignment. Many ancient ruins demonstrate that the people who constructed them had a special interest in celestial alignments and mathematics, also that they possessed a spot-on ability of judging geographical accuracies. From north to south, there is no doubt that past civilizations were involved in incredibly complex calculations and architecture. In Giza, for instance, there are many examples of attention to spatial coordinates. The Great Pyramid's faces are aligned with the four cardinal directions almost perfectly. In fact, they are less than 0.2 of a degree off perfect alignment. More and more evidence is also surfacing in regards to the suspected use of power tools. Numerous drill marks have been discovered within ancient sites over the past few years, even including evidence of misstarts from some form of high-powered tool and accidentally split stones apparently from some form of drilling. These discoveries not only confirm a past advanced ancient civilization here on Earth, but insinuates that they were in fact aware of electrical appliance and maybe even an advanced form of travel that we have yet to discover. The floor space of the Great Pyramid of Giza is approximately 3,023 feet and the height is 481 feet. Its measurements represent the northern hemisphere of the Earth on a scale of 1 to 43,000 two hundredths. Though controversial, some interpret this number as exactly 20 times the precessional number of 2,160, representing the precession of the Earth through 20 different zodiac constellations. Interestingly, the ancient Mayan culture was also heavily implicated within the Alignment, a civilization who displayed advanced celestial knowledge, including a deep fascination with the ages of the zodiac with a life calendar ending around the beginning of Aquarius. Another intriguing alignment is the 6,666-kilometer mystery. The distance between various monuments, Kailash to the North Pole, Kailash to Stonehenge, Egyptian pyramids to the North Pole, Stonehenge to Devil's Tower, Stonehenge to Bermuda Triangle, Bermuda Triangle to Easter Island, and Easter Island to Tazumal are all at a precisely 6,666 kilometer from one another. Just what exactly were these ancient civilizations up to?
The University of Seville, working in collaboration with the Andalusian Institute of Historical Heritage, has conducted an intensive LIDAR survey in a historically compelling area between the Spanish coastal towns of Capasoto and Sancti Petri. Their goal was to discover the remnants of a long written of temple, one dedicated to ancient deities. However, what they discovered instead was an incredibly ancient, once enormous mass dwelling, complex yet intelligently laid out as if almost akin to modern-day standards of care in regard to sanitation management, food production, and quality of dwelling for its massive population's well-being. A mega-metropolis that, predictably, the academics responsible for its discovery have not only attempted to downplay the find, but also tried to claim it as merely proof of their original temple assertion. Clearly, they are merely backing the tale of events put forth by whomever funded said expedition. From the researchers themselves, quote, The survey area consisted of submerged landscape, seemingly dominated by a series of ancient marshes. Something we feel was most probably intelligently managed farmlands prior to the Great Deluge, which eventually drowned this entire mega-metropolis. Yet I digress. They continued, The study revealed a new ancient coastal landscape, with the presence of moorings, an inland port, and several large, monumental buildings." End quote. By combining data from previous anomalous discoveries, the team created a cross-section of findings, and by a process of elimination, they pinpointed an area in which to scan. Yet, interestingly, after said discoveries of the structures, they quickly and simply delimited the entire area without any further field study or investigation whatsoever. Could this rapid delimitation of the area in regards to the LIDAR scanning possibly be in an attempt to obscure the true enormity of this pre-flood ruin? During their focused investigation, they found rectangular structures some 300 by 150 meters in size. However, these discoveries contradicted their own strictly followed academic accounts of this supposedly legendary temple's whereabouts. This discovery being the mission's objective all along, yet curiously, as mentioned, any further expansion of the LIDAR investigations, academic funding has been stonewalled. Could their reluctance to continue further investigations on a mission which has already clearly cost a lot of funding due to them actually having discovered yet another complexly, intelligently, clearly advanced pre-flood megametropolis? Well, we find said possibilities and the rapid growth of independently owned LiDAR technology incredibly exciting. During our research, we have discovered a number of methods to prove that there have indeed been lost civilizations here upon our planet along with their once high technologies. One of the most peculiar being polygonal masonry, which although claimed by some as geopolymer blocks, are made of all sorts of naturally found and subsequently quarried strata. However, what is interesting about this magnificent technique is the visual evidence of more primitive attempts made later, and also its selective use as casing stones, covering sections of far more ancient structures seemingly used in an attempt to conserve said sites from further erosion. One side of particular interest is that of Emilia, found within modern-day Italy, which, after part of the ancient wall collapsed, has been scanned in depth. Non-invasive techniques such as ground-penetrating radar, electrical resistive tomography, specifically adapted for this study, laser scanning and digital terrestrial photogrammetry, integrated with other geomatic measures, were utilized and provided by total station and global navigation satellite systems. The results came as a surprise to those investigating the inner stability of the wall, finding three separate periods of activity. In other words, at least three now lost civilizations had been building the wall prior to the arrival of what is now commonly referred to as the Cyclopean period. According to the official study, quote, 
We defined a max wall thickness of about 3.5 meters for the cyclopic sector. We show details of the internal block organization, and we detected low resistivity values, interpretable with high water content behind the basal part of the walls. Could this be residual evidence of a great flood? They continued, then quantitative analysis to assess reliable geotechnical stability was done. The results give rise, for the first time, to internal imaging of these ancient walls highlighting features associable to different building styles related to different historical periods." End quote. Who were these ancient civilizations? Where did they go? Polygonal techniques are now a lost technology, a smoking gun argument in opposition of modern paradigm, one of a supposed unbroken timeline of continual evolution into our own modern civilization. The study, we feel, has not only proven our own hypothesis regarding multiple lost civilizations, but could also give credence to the theory of the Great Flood. It is a wall, and indeed research discovery, which we find highly compelling. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people, or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide, is now, we feel, overwhelming. Yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle, which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference, revealing, for the first time in well over 2,000 years, just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were, a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet, how this was done and with what are questions which, we find, hugely intriguing.